Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the A-Ray Show. It's finally 2021, which means we've got a brand new year and a great chance to introduce a ton of new things to the channel. And if you guys watched my last video on my goals for 2021, I mentioned I wanted to start a new challenge, and this is it here, the 0 to 100K challenge. So this is something, the challenge that I've always wanted to try, growing a small portfolio from $0 to $100,000 and kind of just documenting the whole process and journey. And this is something that we can all do together, so I thought it would be fun to do. And since the year just started, I thought this would be the best opportunity to kind of just go for it. So with that out of the way, since this is the first video, I'll show you guys what's in my portfolio currently, my strategy going forward, and just some other things. And with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So for those of you guys that know me and watch my videos, you guys know that I'm more of a dividend growth investor than I am a day trader or options trader, and I'm pretty fairly new to option trading too. So with this portfolio and this challenge, I'm going to try to grow this portfolio as aggressively as possible and just kind of have fun while doing it and trying to learn as much as possible in the aspect of day trading and options. So with that, let's kind of just get into the stocks and options that I hold. So the first option I hold is this PLTR at a $25 and a half call. So Let's take a look at that. So I'm down on this. And like I said, I'm not really great at options. So you guys should definitely not be investing exactly how I'm investing. Because as you can see, I'm losing money on it. But hopefully I'll be able to break even. This is a stock that I hold in my portfolio too. And I saw that it was a, on a huge discount and a big dip. So instead of just averaging up on it because I'm actually up on it in my portfolio, I decided to buy a call option. And I was just kind of experimenting to see how that would work. So that's the first option that I have. And as I get more comfortable with options and as I do it more and succeed in doing options, I'm probably going to invest more into options and kind of just try that out. But that's the first option I have. So that was my one and only option as of now. I'm going to probably try to do one to two options every single week and kind of just grow that experience in options. And as this portfolio grows, we're going to kind of do some covered calls on this channel. We're going to do some other strategies like the wheel strategy, for example. Well, with that option out of the way, let's kind of just go into the stocks that I have. So right now, the stocks that have been performing pretty well for me are energy companies, EV companies, some tech companies, and SPACs. SPACs have just been exploding over the past few months, and I'm, I've am i just been buying tons of SPACs with that I think have a tons of potential. So with that, let's kind of just look at them. So I probably should have just organized this a little bit better, but the top three companies here, these are all EV companies and EV companies are electric vehicle companies and they've all been performing super well, especially now that we're kind of trending away from gasoline and those type of vehicles and we're kind of moving into clean energy as a world and as a community. So I've definitely been investing more into these type of companies. Some of these I might hold long term. I just kind of want to pick out a few of them right now and see the ones that survive. Obviously, Tesla is one of the ones that's just going to be up there. They're more of a big data company and electric vehicle company at the same time. But I don't have the funds to kind of buy that many shares. So as this portfolio grows, we're probably going to be buying Tesla and maybe even some call options into them. But for now, we're just going to kind of stick with these type of companies like Neo, Fisker, Hillion, and kind of just growing our portfolio from them. So for the purpose of this video not being too long, we're just going to kind of gloss over every single one of these stocks. And as this series goes on, because it is a series, if I decide to sell a stock, I'll let you guys know why. If I decide to keep it long term, I'll do a more in-depth video on that. But for now, we're just going to kind of gloss over and kind of just keep it rolling from there. And also one more thing, I might not end up keeping every single EV company. I just kind of want to see how they're doing for now. And as time builds up and I can take profits, I might end up just choosing one. For example, NEO is the one I'm leaning towards right now. Hillion has not been performing pretty well. I do see a nice long-term potential in them, but for now, they're not really the type of company that I want to put in a portfolio where I'm trying to grow it as fast as possible. Uh, I'm actually down on Hillion, so probably just going to take profits when I do break even and then just kind of move it somewhere else. But that's that. Let's kind of just move on. So I've got Rocket Mortgage, PLTR. I've actually bought this company since IPO and I've doubled my money. PLTR has been a great company. I might end up keeping that long-term. And then we've got some SPACs. So I didn't really get to talk about this, but a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company. And they're basically blank check companies. And their purpose is to basically help another company go public without going through the traditional IPO processes. For example, this one right here, AMCI, is a blank check company, but it'll help another company. For example, this scenario, it's actually named Advent Technologies. So they're going to help Advent Technologies go public. So the way that works is it's basically just going to have investors be able to invest into it. 
and then they're going to have a day to kind of vote on the merger and then the company will merge. So this has just been a trend that's been happening in the end of 2020, basically, and it's been happening for tons of companies. For example, it happened to Fisker, it happened to Hillion. So those are just a few examples. So I decided to get a tons of SPACs and I'll let you guys know the reason why. But let me just show you guys the ones that I have. So I have AMCI, I have BFT, this one here, this one, this one, this one, and also this one. So you can see I have tons of SPACs. So the reason why I have all these SPACs is because there's been a trend recently where these companies before merger date, they tend to shoot up almost 100%, basically doubling your money. And after they merge, sometimes they go up and sometimes they go down. But basically a lot of investors end up just taking profits and then basically these companies dip after merger date. So that's happened with the likes of Hillion and Fisker. And these are two that I decided to keep because I wanted to see how they were going to do long term because I believed in the EV sector and I still do. But basically, long story short, what happens is they tend to dip afterwards. So I decided to just pick up tons of SPACs, hoping that they would just double and I would end up selling it and keeping the ones that I believe in. So out of all the SPACs that I have, the ones that I believe in the most is IPOC and they're going to merge with Clover Health or Clover something like that. But it's definitely a company that I'm going to be looking more into and just kind of keeping it in the long term. But so what I usually do in my strategy is I'll buy anywhere between 25 to 20 shares, as you can see. And this one only has 15 because I should be adding more. But what I do is as soon as that money doubles, I tend to share half my share. So that would basically be all the money I invested and I would get that money back. And I would just allocate that to a different SPAC or a different company that I believe in. But I'd be able to just trim the profits, take some for myself, invest it somewhere else. And if I believe in that company in the long term, for example, Hillion here or Fisker, I originally had more shares than this, but I ended up taking some profits and moving it elsewhere. So that's been my strategy this whole time for special acquisition companies, just kind of taking profits and moving them elsewhere as soon as that money doubles. So it's been pretty effective. Um, I've been doing pretty well with that strategy. I don't know how long this back trend is going to happen. And this isn't guaranteed for every single stock. It's not like a money hack or a life hack. It's just something that's been working out recently. But this could definitely just stop happening one day. Or a lot of investors can kind of just get on this trend. And maybe one day it'll slow down. But for now, it's been working pretty well. And that's why I have all these SPACs. I did tell you guys that I'm not a growth investor. Or at least I'm not a good one. I do try to do it, but I did put that disclaimer out there. So other than that, I have some clean energy companies, fuel cell, CLNE. So those are just a few there. Um, I also want to talk about this company, GNUS, Genius, Genius Brands. So as you can see, I'm down $1,751. So what I did was when this company was basically kind of a penny stock, it was around 5 or $6 and I bought it and it exploded to $10 and I was straight up chilling with like double my profit. But I kind of got greedy and what happened was I didn't end up selling it and now it's worth probably around $1.50. And as you can see, this is like all my portfolio here. So I've definitely made my fair share of mistakes. So I've been investing to penny stocks since I started this portfolio maybe a while back. But I've definitely took my fair share of L's and just kind of moved on from here. The reason I didn't send it, sell it to uh, end the year off was because I already tax loss harvested with another company. So... I guess I'm saving this one for a future time. I also do believe in this company in the long term. So hopefully I'll be able to make my money back. If not, it is what it is. And I'm just going to kind of keep it here and forget about it. That's why it's all the way at the bottom. So I don't have to look at it because I do get up. I do get emotional like, oh, shoot. Like I really did mess up. I really messed up really badly here. But it is what it is. So that's that's pretty much it for all the stocks I currently hold. And this will be changing from pretty much not daily, but probably weekly. For example, if this company over here decides to merge and I double my money, I'll probably share, sell half my shares and just kind of move on to another company. All right, let's move on to the last thing that I have. So I have Dogecoin right here. And I know y'all probably going to laugh, but Dogecoin is basically a meme cryptocurrency. And I'm not going to lie, I first seen it on TikTok and it was like, yo, everyone buy a dollar or whatever. And basically, if it does ever reach a dollar, then you basically like 100x your money. So I originally bought it at like like a third. So right now it's at a, a ninth of a penny. I originally bought it at a third of a penny and it went all the way up to half a penny. And I basically doubled my profits and ended up selling it. But I decided to buy it again and I bought it at a half a penny. And right now it's basically at a penny. So I was able to kind of just double the money that I paid with. So you can see that 
my cost is $25 and my equity is at $50. So I basically doubled my money on a meme. And that's really what this world has come to. Basically, memes are out here just exploding. Like, literally, for example, Elon Musk is marketing through memes by pricing his products at like $69. So it's just kind of crazy that the world that we live in, memes are able to kind of just generate a ton of hype and it's free marketing. So, I mean, it is what it is. I can't believe I'm actually making money off a meme. So this is a company that I just kind of put in a little money into just to kind of see how it does. If it ever does reach a dollar, that would be insane. I'd basically be like, like, I, I don't even, I can't even do the math, but the money, $25 that I put in here would just explode. All jokes aside, it definitely isn't a bad idea to kind of just invest into some cryptocurrency. It's a way to kind of diversify your portfolio. For example, Bitcoin is one that you can really never go wrong with. Just kind of having a few dollars here and there in it. You never know if it does explode you'll be able to kind of just bank on that. Even if it doesn't have to be like your full portfolio, it could be like one to 5% of your portfolio. And that's exactly what I'm doing with Dogecoin. I'll just leave it at $20, see how it does. But I do have Bitcoin, but that's for a topic for another video. I have it on my Coinbase account. But with that, that's pretty much all the stocks that I have. Um, I do want to let you guys know one thing. It's kind of like a disclaimer. So you guys know I try to be as transparent as possible. So I'm sitting at $6,100. But I've put in more money than that. So we'll grow to all time. You can see I'm down 2400 So please just don't be investing into whatever I invest just because I'm doing it. Um, you guys probably watch my other videos. And I mean, maybe to you guys, I might seem a little knowledgeable. But let's be honest, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's kind of fun to do. So it is what it is. Uh, on this date, October 30th, my portfolio was at $4,000. And I was down 4598 I have bounced back since then and this was my lowest point where I was just investing to any penny stock that I saw on Twitter or stock tweets, which I wouldn't recommend using by the way. But I was pretty much investing in what other people were telling me. Now I'm doing my own research and ever since this day I've kind of just bounced back. So that's just a disclaimer, don't invest into whatever I'm doing. But this is a strategy or a challenge that we're just going to kind of do together and have fun with. But I will definitely be bouncing back, making my money back. So for example, if you look at my one month or my three months where I kind of learned what I was doing, I was up 40%. So that's not like super impressive, but it is pretty impressive for me. So I just want to let you guys know that don't invest into whatever I am just because I'm doing it. Always do your own research and have fun with it and make money. So yeah, that was it for the zero to 100,000 challenge. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this content or if you guys want me to make more of these videos, if I should do it weekly or if I should do it bi-weekly, let me know in the comments. We're definitely starting off strong. We have this giant dip out of nowhere where we basically just lost $100 in the past hour. So definitely started off strong. Let me know if you guys want to see more where I just keep losing my money over and over again and you guys can just kind of laugh at me. But all jokes aside, we will be bouncing back. 2021 is our year. So guys, leave a comment, let me know and peace out. And remember guys, everybody eats except for me.